Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Sachi. I heard that one. Welcome this morning. Um, any visitors amongst us? Nobody visiting us. All right. Well, welcome anyone and everybody. Can I just ask you as we start our service to turn off your devices, mobile phones or anything else that make, might make a sound and uh, take a mind somewhere else. Also just to say that uh, Pastor David, Pastor David Dixon and uh, Susie, his wife, are not here with us this morning. They are down in Requena, which is on the east coast of Spain. They've gone down there for um, an ordination of a new pastor there actually a graduate from the um, faculty at uh, Alcobendas where they are professors there. So that's the reason they're not here. We have our brother Sachi who will give us the Lord's word this morning and on the subject of, I think it's the purpose of prayer. So we'll be praying for that as well. Now I don't know what your set of mind is this morning what your heart is like. I was uh, thinking of um, David this morning when he says, you know, I was so glad when he said to me, let's go up to the house of the Lord. And I start thinking, you know, what, what do I feel like? And um, when you think that in David's time, there was no temple, it was actually a tabernacle. And when you think of what tabernacle means, you know, it signifies the Lord willing to dwell in, with his people. You know, it's good for us to remember that. We come to be with our brothers and sisters, to worship, to pray, to hear the Lord speak to us, and to enjoy the Lord's presence here with us this morning as we come to the tabernacle, to the place where the Lord is. And I'm just going to read a verse that Satch has asked me to read. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Let's come together then to pray to our Lord as we begin the service this morning. Lord, we thank you for being able to be here this morning. We want to be honest with ourselves and look into our hearts and think, why am I here? Did I want to be here? Was I dragged here? Was I said I had to be here, told I had to be here? Lord, help us to leave aside anything that detracts from the joy of being in your presence. Heal our hearts and our minds so that we may be able to concentrate in being in your presence this morning. We don't know, or I don't know what can trouble us, what is traveling, troubling us, and many things in life will do and bring us down and detract from our joy in you. And we pray, Lord, that we may again be able to join the psalmist in saying, oh, bless the Lord of my soul, and encourage ourselves to bless you and to remember all your goodness to us. And count them one by one. And let's not forget the main one. That is that you have taken us from darkness into your kingdom, into your light. You have forgiven us. We were once enemies. Now we are sons and daughters of the living God. We thank you for that. We want to rejoice with you this morning and with our brothers and sisters. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Please stand to, to sing the hymn number four, and you can find this in the blue books under the seats in front of you.
take your seats. Hi, good morning. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 18. The parable of the persistent widow. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused. But afterward he said to himself, Though I ne neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to, this, to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the word of the Lord. Will he find faith on earth, the faith to go to God in prayer? The songs that we're going to sing this morning are all about that. Will you stand and join us as we take these songs to God in our seeking him?
trust in God's great power. Let us sing about the power of his love. We'll invite the children to go to your classes now. Sorry, we forgot about that. Good morning. It's good to see uh, my beloved brother Ruben just uh, so close to the front. That will motivate me. And he's saying, I'm watching you, brother. 
It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. And I trust that the Lord has something very special for each one of us this morning. Amen. I've had a rather rough week. But God is faithful. And God remains uh, faithful to his word. The pastor asked me to preach on a subject which I've entitled The Purpose for Prayer or The Purpose of Prayer. And that was on a Wednesday. And on Thursday morning, I had no voice at all. My voice had completely gone. And I wonder, should I call the pastor and tell him, sorry, I can't preach on Sunday because I have no voice at all. But I began to pray and seek the Lord. And I was at work and people were laughing at me because I had no voice. And I remember the priest in the, in the Bible who had no voice at all. God had taken his voice away from him. And this morning before coming to preach, again I had a back problem. And I was thinking, God, I got to talk to brother Eric, maybe he can preach this morning. I'll just send the notes to him and he can preach this morning. So I've had a rather uh, interesting uh, few moments. But I don't know the reason why. It's because of this. The purpose for prayer. And be reminded to depend solemnly on the Lord. And he alone is able to uh, help us even today. I see that the people from different countries this morning, from Nigeria, from Ghana, from England, from the US, from Australia, Abba from, uh, from, 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 from Kenya, Abari, it's good to see you this morning. The Word of God says from Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, it says, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. So we come from different places, but God has redeemed us. And now we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging unto God for one reason, one reason alone. And that is to worship our God and to praise him alone. Shall we all stand to our feet and pray before we enter into this sermon? I ask of you this morning to keep a work and alert. If your neighbor begins to doze off, give that gentle tap on their shoulders so you cannot be a work and alert. Because this message is not only for a few, it is for, for you. I don't know how long you've been in the service for the Lord. I don't know how your relationship is with the Lord this morning. But God has said one thing to me this morning, and that is, let's break the camp. Let's proceed on. And breaking camp means forgetting all that has happened in your lifetime, studying anew with the Lord. If I was to ask you a testimony, give me a testimony today, they'd probably say, I can't seem to remember, but I remember many, many years ago. God is alive and God is here today. He wants a testimony of today. So we're going to pray now and ask the Lord to, to reveal to us regarding this message, the purpose for prayer. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come before your holy throne this morning because you know that you said in your word when you saw the people in the synagogue, Busy doing things that are not meant to be in your temple, oh God. And you draw them out. And you say, don't turn my house into a house of thieves. This is a house of prayer. We're asking of you, Heavenly Father, to now draw us near to your throne this morning. Teach us how to pray, oh God. Teach us how to pray all the time. Help us, O oh Lord, to be like the persistent widow. We ask in our Holy Spirit to speak anew to our, to our hearts this morning through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Be seated. 
Prayer is a very important topic to every follower of Jesus Christ. We're asked to pray and pray all the time. We have seen from God's word of Luke chapter 18 of this woman who was persistent uh, uh, in her and her desire to see justice. She went time and time again to the judge and begged of the judge wanting justice. Christ gave this parable so we can also understand why it is important for us to pray without Amen. To pray all the time, to pray without ceasing. How many of us are praying all the time without stopping? I'm not. How many of us are saying, I, I woke up in the morning like Christ did in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, that every day he woke up in the morning before, I mean, before it was daytime. He rose up and went away on his own. He never woke his neighbor or his followers. He went alone. Christ is trying to emphasize why it is important for us to understand that prayer is a private matter between you and your God. Christ spent many, many hours in the, in, with his father praying before he began to do things in those villages, in those cities, in those towns. He spent many hours. In fact, they had to look for him. They always wondered, where is he? But they knew he was having a conversation with his father, with, with God himself. Don't you wonder why Christ spent many hours praying? I cannot wonder him being God himself. If I was asked the ashes this morning, how many are worshiping with us this morning? Probably give me a number. It could be uh, that we're more than 80 in this house. Could I be right? Or more than 90. But the smallest gathering in a church is a prayer meeting. I pose that to you, and I pose also to myself. Why don't we pray? Does God answer our prayers? Are we afraid to pray? Are we not motivated to pray? If Christ had this anger and desire to pray all the time without ceasing, if before he went uh, to call his disciples, he spent 40 days and 40 nights praying in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, so to me, I see that that was the, the most important thing that Christ did was communion with his Father and not a service to the world. He came into the world to seek and to save the lost. Amen to that. But the first thing he did was prayer with my Father. As we go along in the, in, in the sermon, we shall see that having prayed all this time, he was able to do wonderful things but he only spent a few seconds doing them. We spent a few seconds with the Lord and tried to solve problems out there. Now Christ spent many hours and just said to the blind man, see, and he saw. To the leper, you're healed. Your sins are forgiven. Rise up and walk. He walked on water. It took him a few Seconds only. And we spend a few seconds with the Lord in the morning. Thank you, Father, for this day. Amen. And now I can go into the world and begin to solve problems. And then we can spend more than, four, more than five hours trying to solve a problem. And there's no result to that. I'd like us to put in mind as we go through the service... Two things, that we are spirit beings created in the image of God. We have a body and we have the spirit of God in us. The other item that I have to look at as well is this one. The battle we fight is not against flesh and blood, 
but it's, it's against principalities, it's against the dark world, it's against the devil. So let's keep those things in mind. But first, 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 first things first, we're looking at the purpose of prayer. What is a purpose? A purpose is defined as something, the, the, the original intent of anything is called its purpose. We've been created for a reason by God. Everything has a purpose in life. Everything you can think of. When God said, let there be light, there was a reason for light. Let there be the trees and the animals. See, everything that God has created, he did so for a good reason. Marriage is for a reason. If you don't see the reason in marriage, marriage, marriage just break down. Where there's no communication in marriage, marriage will actually break down. When you abuse marriage, marriage will break down. So everything in life, God made for a reason. End of the year, you had plans, right? You, you guys had made plans for this year. We're now at the end of January. How is that working for you? Are we still going to the gym? Are we still going for those long walks? Are we still reading the Bible every day? Are we still praying? Are we still doing the diets? Are we calling our family members every week? We have many plans, right? Many, many plans. The Bible says that man has so many plans, but it's only the purpose of the Lord that will prevail. We plan to do so many things in life. I want to be there in the next five years. I want to be there in the next 10 years. I want to be there and doing all that. But God says, only his purpose will prevail. To help us understand this message, I'd like us to look at a few things, four items actually, and I've called them the prayer life of Christ. What is prayer? What is the purpose of prayer? And how can you be effective in prayer? We'll look at the prayer life of Christ, which I've actually alluded to earlier on. Okay, there we go. What was the prayer life of Christ like? What was the prayer life of Christ like? How did he manage to keep his prayers going every day? What motivated him to pray? I was asking earlier on, in your own life, have you seen God answer your prayers? Yes. Amen. Thank you for that. What about this other side? We're all silent. Brother Eric was singing a song and everyone was, yay, amen, praise the Lord. We're asking the, the most important questions in life now. How is prayer going for you, brother? Sincerely asking this question. Do we actually seek the Lord in everything that we do? Or do we go about asking our friends, you pray for me because I need this, you pray for me before we actually pray on ourselves. The first, thing, first things first, prayer is communication, right? We gotta communicate with our Father. And Christ had a priority in life. He was praying all the time. Christ understood the best of prayer, which I call from Genesis chapter one and verse 26. I would like the church to read with me this important verse in the Bible. Shall we, shall we read together? Then God said, That is the birth of prayer. 
God made the heavens and the earth, and then God said, let us make man, let us, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our own likeness. You and me created an image of God. So God made us in his own image. So God is spirit. We are spirit beings, as I said, in our own. And then God makes a body. That's why we're called humans. Humans is the dirt. Man is the spirit. So God puts spirit into the dirt and become a human being. But now, nowadays, we're all interested in the dirt. What's up? The dirt. The TikTok, it's all about the dirt, the outside. We are so entangled in knowing the dirt. If I can do this, a feeler, then I can still look younger every day. If I can do something to my face, then maybe I can be more handsome or, or more beautiful. And then I can have so many likes. You know, so many likes. You know those likes that you see in TikTok, in Instagram, and, and, and WhatsApp? God says, let us make man in our own image. He made you in his own image. The Spirit of God draws within you. But your body, he said, let them take dominion, which means that having created the earth, God places man and woman on the earth and, is, and tells them, you guys are going to take authority on the earth. You're going to be in power, in dominion over the creeping things on the earth. He gave them authority on the earth, you and I, by the Lord. But then we need the Lord, isn't it, don't we? We need actually God to help us because we're helpless without him. We made a mess of the world, of the earth. We need him to give us guidance all the time. But this is the birth of prayer. That's why we communicate with the Lord. So then he also says that the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind, and that you get from, uh, from Psalms. You guys can help me at the back. From Psalm chapter 115, verse 16, says the heavens belong to God, but the earth he's given to man. So God has given us the earth, but we've made a mess of the earth. That's why God invites us to, to pray. We can go back to him in prayer. So what is prayer then? I'm ask you, how can you define prayer? Some people are very scared to actually pray or are not interested in praying. If I was to say right now, let's all pray and spend the next half an hour praying, I'll probably have a skeleton of people saying, I'm sorry, brother, I gotta go because I gotta, I gotta go. We are running away from prayer, aren't we? So what is prayer then? I define prayer this way. Help me at the back. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6, it says, But when you pray, you go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what you, you've done in secret, he will reward you. First of all, prayer is secret, as I say. It's a private thing between you and, and your God. And then he's telling us, but when you pray, it means that he wants us to actually pray all the time. He doesn't say, if you pray. He says, when you pray. All right? So when you, when you pray, he's asking us to say, we need to pray and pray all the time. So what is the meaning of prayer? Before a person comes to the kingdom of God, because we're all sinned and friends short of his own glory, what do you do? We ask God for help, don't we? You realize that I'm a sinner. I need someone mightier than I am. Who is, his name is God, Yahweh. We go to him in prayer. We ask him, Father, forgive me of my sins. I've sinned. And God says, if your sins be as red as scarlet, come. I'll make you as white as snow. So God gives us this invitation to be in communion with him. Allowing God the access to influence 
earth. That is prayer. Remember he says, let them take authority over the earth. Let them. He takes himself out of the equation. Let us make man. Let them do something on, on the earth. But now we've messed up the earth and we're saying, God, we need you. May you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May you will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We see a decay in society right now. We see marriages are broken. We see our young children right now hooked onto drugs. The cities in the U.S. when they read the news, I see that you can't actually go there. They are, they are like zombies in, the, in, in those streets. They're all under drugs. We need God to influence our society. I need God to influence my family. I need God to influence my workmates in my zone. I need God to do that. And I have to stand in the gap, not only for myself, but also for my family. Those that are near to me, we can actually influence them. But did you know that prayer has no boundaries? I can pray for someone in the US and God will answer. I can pray for someone in, in Nairobi and God will answer. So you can't say, bueno, I, I'm not in Pakistan, so I can't pray for those guys. No, God is telling us we can still pray for them. And God will still answer our prayers. So then prayer is communication with the Lord. We honor God in everything. What is the purpose of prayer then? Everything we said has a purpose, right? Everything has a purpose. What is the purpose of prayer? Why do we pray? If God being so sovereign, he made everything, and you're asking me, but is there a reason for me to pray? That's a good question, right? If God being so sovereign, why should I pray? I've been praying for so many years, my brother, but I seem, I seem not to get the answers from the Lord, so I gave up. No me llama la atención. You know, prayer doesn't call me. I'm not into, into this thing of prayer. Prayer is for a few people only. Only for those that pray intercessors. You know, we call them intercessors. But God is saying from Thessalonians that we are all intercessors. He says, pray without ceasing. Everybody is called to prayer. No exception whatsoever. So then what is the purpose of prayer? The answer I gave it earlier on, I said, prayer is allowing God access into the earth. And the purpose of prayer is asking God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm going to tell a story that I think you all know. We're going to look at Luke chapter 11. The Bible says, Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. Finally, the disciples caught up. Finally, the disciples knew, why was Jesus Christ so dynamic in his ministry? Why is it that he spent a few seconds healing the sick, the blind can, uh, can see, the lip, I mean, those that are crippled could walk. Why? They finally caught up. They said because he spends more time praying, and that is why he's so successful. And right here it says, he was praying in a certain place, and they say to him, Master, teach us how to pray. If maybe one of us was there, we would probably say, Master, teach me how to heal the sick. And you have your mobile phone charged up. So you can actually do it on, on TikTok live. Master, teach me how to walk on water. You're going to call all these broadcasters to come and see you walk on water. 
Why? Because you want to be famous. They only asked him one thing. Teach us how to pray. So they saw the, the, the most important thing was that Christ spent more time and they wanted to know how to pray. And this is how to pray. He says, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. In other words, we must all realize and recognize that God is holy. God is holy. First things first. He is almighty. He's sovereign above all things. Thy kingdom come. Your righteousness may rule on this earth. Not our personal gain, not for personal gains, but that his will be done on earth. So prayer is not something that is selfish for our selfish reasons. That's why the Bible says that you pray and don't receive. Why? You pray amiss. I'm praying that God give me those shoes for me only, for, only for me. That nice suit that I see that I can wear on a Sunday, for me only. Now God is asking us to do greater things than that. The kingdom of God is not about food and drink, he says. It's about power and righteousness. And our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities in the dark world. There are people dying every day. There are wars going on every day. There are those that have, are, committed, are committing suicide every day. There are those that are addicted to drugs every day. And God is wanting us to pray for these people. Daniel was a man of God. He prayed, and, and God is able to close the mouth of the lions. David was able to say to Goliath, today, your carcass will be eaten up by the birds. There is a confidence that we have in Christ, saints, that when we pray, God hears our prayers. If we pray according to his will, according to his word, Christ was in anguish and pain and was saying to his father, take this cup away from me. But he said, not my will, but yours be done. When we're in pain and anguish, do we say to God, I cannot pray the mass. I can't, I can't continue like this. And God is saying, like a soldier in the army of the Lord, take up your armor, which is prayer. We're doing battle with the enemy. But remember, we are victorious in the Lord. God has won the battle. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, who saves us every day. So may you make prayer something that is important in your life. Make prayer real in your life. Let God help you to pray all the time without ceasing. But first of all, pray. Second of all, pray again. Don't be weary. I've never seen soldiers relaxing without guns when there's a war going on. Have you? Having a cup of tea, having a picnic when there's a war going on. And Christians are described as being soldiers in the army of the Lord. We've got to be alert with the guns ready. Ready. When you see the flying darts of the enemy, we can pray about these things and seek the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's make prayer a priority in our lives uh, this year. In conclusion, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. It says, the Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. In other words, God watches over his word to fulfill it. And that is the power of prayer. When you pray and ask God, but you have said this in your word. You've said it. And God says, yes, I have. And yes, I will fulfill it. Because God is not like man that he should change his mind. Or a son of man that he should lie. He won't say one thing today and tomorrow he changes his mind. That is our God. What he says, he says, I will do. We, we all change our minds every day. Leaders say, no, it was opinions. I've changed my opinion, right? God never does that. What he says, he sticks to it. Because he is. A faithful God. Allow me to address this to you this morning. 
Maybe you're here this morning and asking yourself, praying to an invisible God, not appealing to me. For those who receive Christ, you have the Holy Spirit, and he helps us to pray. For those of us who have not received the Lord, I want to read this to you. If you could declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you're here this morning, you haven't received Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, and this message about prayer and the purpose of prayer and why it's so important to pray, for you it's not something that is real. I'd like to invite you to, to seek the Lord today. He says, Behold, I stand by the door and knock. If you hear my voice, I'll come in to you and dine with you. Now, prayer won't be a strange thing to you. But first of all, you must make this stand in your life. You must accept Christ as your personal Savior. Like, like Nicodemus said, how can I enter the kingdom of God? And Christ said to him, you must be born again, born anew. How can I go back to my mother's womb? I'm so old, he said. It's a second rebirth. Come to Christ. He's willing to, to set us free. For those of you that have been in the Lord for so many years, and we have this one line of prayer every day, for what about to receive, may the Lord make us really thankful. Amen. That's the prayer. Lord, this day is beautiful. Help me, Lord. Amen. We go. God needs us to pray. Amen. We need to pray. We need to spend more time in prayer, not the wine liners. Let's speak to him. He says he will listen. He is the vine. We are the branches. If we abide in him, he says, ask of anything in my name and I will do it. I urge you there for this year, as we start this year, to spend more time with the Lord in prayer to seek the face of the Lord in prayer and not to give up. Let's stand again and pray together. It's very important for us to declare within our hearts to say, I, I pledge to pray. Make this pledge before the Lord, you and your God that I desire to pray and pray without ceasing, to pray all the time in the spirit, and God help us. Let's all pray. Father, we thank you today that we can look to you as our God and as our Father and as our, as our friend, we thank you that your word is very clear. The Lord, you said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. We are asking, Heavenly Father, to make us a people of prayer. The Lord will realize the importance of prayer, the power of prayer, and apply this in our lives. You say, Lord, we should not be like the hypocrites who think that by their many words will be heard by my Father. We ask that, Lord, in our, in our private homes, you may help us to be a people of prayer. So we thank you for your word today, and we ask that, Lord, you may, you, may, you may take this word with us in our hearts. We may, we may meditate upon this word, our God. Above all, we pray that, Lord, we shall be doers of your word, because we're asking it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. As we respond to this message, um, we have a new song that we're going to be learning today about prayer. And Brother Sachi asked, asked us, um, why don't we pray? What is it that keeps us from prayer? So let's reflect on that as we seek the Lord, as we res re respond to this message.
us to find communion with you, to enjoy the time that we spend in your presence. Jesus, we rely on you. Let that be seen in our lives day by day, moment by moment as we seek you in prayer. In Jesus' name. So please, let's pray for our offering. As we sing, you know my heart, you know my need, you know every part of me. So God, we come before you with humble heart to say thank you for all the goodness we receive from you. Yes, you said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, we come before you with humble heart, O oh God. 
may we seek your presence because your presence can make us strong. And God, we are so blessed for all the goodness we see from you. We don't have a word to say thank you. Because when we are empty, you feed us until we overflowed. And when we are hungry, you feed us. And that causes us to know that we are so blessed. So God, we bring our tithe and offering to you. And know that we are want to pay the goodness we see from you. But we just want to participate in for the extension of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand for the, the doxology. announcements before we finish. Let's see if we can get them done in a few minutes. Um, first of all, well, at the back, you'll be flipping over. Great stuff. Parents youth meeting or youth parent meeting. Um, it'd be today at 11.45 here. So parents of the youth, something special, meet at 11.45. Um, a big thanks. Next one. There we go. A big thanks uh, to all those volunteers and helpers that helped the work there yesterday. I'm sure we see some of the improvements being made. A lot of work still to be done. Baptismal classes starting next Sunday at 11.45. If anybody's thinking or wondering, you know, be, feel free to go up there and find out and maybe be convinced. Next one, uh, rummage giveaway. This will be happening next Sunday and the Sunday after that, 4th and 11th of February. That's been run by the social ministry. We'll get clothes and other stuff out there for all those who wish to um, help themselves, are in need. That is part of our work in the social ministry. Valentine's banquet. That would be on Saturday the 10th, 6.30. Great fun day or evening there. Make sure you uh, sign up for you know, things that you're going to bring or even just attend. So that at the back today. Um, women's ministry. There's a lot of stuff going on there. So, you know, 
just go into the uh, IBC website and you can just have a look at everything that's being done there. Uh, women's ministry, just to say that they're looking for a lady to look after the west side zone of Madrid. Please contact Bebe Kum um, if you are being called to um, that service for the Lord and for our sisters as well. International missions, we <clears throat> carry on this month and the next, January and February. Um, cooperative efforts and our support in prayer or financially as well, just keep that in mind. Tax credits available. Uh, from the office, anybody who's interested for the givings throughout the last year of 23. Uh, I don't know whether there's still any newcomers here. They weren't as uh, we started the service, but if there are anybody next to them, just you know, make them feel welcome. Invite them for coffee and invite them to meet other people. Or they can also, and I should say, they can also um, sign up uh, through the QR if they are willing to... Um, share their details and we can get into contact and then they, they feel welcome here. The IBC website, oh sorry, website, web app for all sorts of things that you might want to post there or look at or, you know, either jobs or a table or chairs that you don't want, etc. So, you know, just make sure that you can go through that. And now we finish. There are various things going on. The adult Bible class uh, downstairs. They're going through the book of Isaiah, or the books of Isaiah, I should say. Um, ladies' Bible study as well. And the choir upstairs. Don't forget uh, the youth parents meeting here at 11.45. And coffee afterwards for everybody. Thank you. And now let's all stand as we close with the benediction and the closing chorus. Let's go to the Lord once again in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to praise your holy name and we want to thank you for giving us the privilege of having access to you constantly through prayer. Thank you because you call us to be men and women of prayer and we want to devote ourselves to this. Help us as we commit our plans, as we commit what we have to do this week to bring it before you, knowing that you've promised to be with us, but you want us to, to, to spend time with you in prayer. Help us to make that a priority in our lives. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. is over. May you all have a blessed week and see you next Sunday.